Here we see Betty using a steel stick to get at the food in the container. When this proves impossible, she does something surprising. Spontaneously, after trying to get the bucket with a straight tool, she bent one end of it into a hook and used that to extract the bucket. astonished us and it wasn't the aim of the experiment at all. I would never have predicted that the crows would be able to fashion the hooks from scratch like that. When it was shown that the use of tools was not unique to humans, scientists turned to the use of language, which had caused supporters of Darwinism to run into problems. Darwin's theories about natural selection involved gradualization. Since all life forms share a common ancestry, different traits should appear in several species. But language seemed to be unique to Homo sapiens. With One wonders how Darwin would react to Pambanisha and the other bonobo chimpanzees at the Grape Ape Trust in Iowa. Can you tell our visitor about the last thing that's going to be in the coffee? That's right. That's right. That's right. We're, we're going to have candy in our coffee. That's right. We're going to have candy in our coffee. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Since anthropoid apes do not have highly developed speech organs, the scientists here have used technology to establish a dialogue between our two species. Okay. Pamanisha said... Pamanisha, watch this. Make sure I say it right. We were going to have coffee, that's a surprise, that has sugar in it and M&M's. Isn't that right? That's right. <laughs> the star pupil, Kanzi, has a better grasp of English than any other non-human being. Can you find some lexigrams for me? Can you find ball? Ball. Oh. Very good. Can you find milk? Milk. Milk. Good. A lot of what they talk about is food, but they can talk about being scared, they can talk about uh, being happy, they can talk about being mad or sad, uh, whether they, they have a hurt, whether their stomach hurts, their head hurts, and they can talk about the things they want to do. Tyler said we had two choices for lunch. He was going to make pancake bread or he could make noodles. Which one did you want? Noodles. Noodles. Okay, we'll tell Tyler. It is not known just how lunch. big bonobo chimpanzees' vocabularies can good. become. We know that the productive vocabulary is limited to 384 lexigrams, but their receptive uh, vocabulary, we don't know. We suspect it is much, much larger. Can you find egg? The question is if these are actual language skills or if they're simply memorizing different words. Bill Fields thinks he knows the answer. They acquire language just like human children do. They can respond to novel circumstances. For example, Kanzi was uh, exposed to 660 novel sentences, sentences he had never heard. Like Kanzi, put the keys in the refrigerator. Kanzi, go to the refrigerator and get a Coke and give it to Rose. And he was able to okay, respond to those sentences about 75% of the time with accuracy. I believe that all bonobos, all chimpanzees, probably all primates, have some ability to acquire human-like language in some degree. All right, we've got our coffee. They want to film you getting your coffee. So you ready to have it? Pambanisha, Kansi, and the other chimps get their coffee in the air. Pambanisha, get yours. Are you ready for yours? All right. We've had to give up the exclusive rights to a number of different traits which we thought were unique to our species. They all seem to lie dormant in our closest relatives. Scientists have observed behavior in anthropoid apes which could be construed as early stages of empathy and helpfulness. 
and here we see planning for the future. The orangutan retains a tool which is useless for the moment, but which it will need to collect food an hour from now. Scientists now know that the similarities between humans and anthropoid apes are more than skin deep. So if you line up a region of the human genome and the corresponding region of the chimp genome, you can look at the changes in individual bases, A, C's, T's and G's, and you'll find that 98.3% of them are identical. That means that we are very, very much like a chimpanzee at the molecular level. But if we share most of our mental capabilities with chimpanzees, and if the genetic differences are minimal, then how does one explain that they're unable to record their history or perform open-heart surgery? To understand that, we have to take a closer look at the actual differences between us and them. Scientists at the Stone Age Institute have taught chimpanzees to manufacture tools using our ancestors' methods. So we can actually do a comparison of skill levels between three species over two and a half million years. Modern apes, bonobos, modern humans, and the prehistoric hominids over two and a half million years ago. Here we see Kanzi demonstrating his ability to manufacture knives made out of stone. Kanzi actually has become fairly proficient in stone tool making. Uh, some people dismiss uh, what he's doing and say he's not making stone tools, but he is. Kanzi's technique may be impressive, but he still has a long way to go before he reaches even our ancestors' level. We looked at over 40 different criteria, oh. and the bonobos, they show remarkable skill. You can see they are flaking this material, but in many different aspects of their flaking, they're showing less skill than even the earliest stone tool nappers. Other species seem to lack the ability to build on existing knowledge. Chimpanzees simply do what they're taught to do. Humans are different. At some point in our early history, we acquired the ability to accumulate knowledge. We were able to transfer skills to the next generation and to add new things. At Olduvai, there are signs of technological evolution, which no other species has shown signs of. Our mental capabilities have arisen because of the characteristics of a specific organ. OK, so here you have half of a human brain. Actually, it is, it is the right hemisphere of a human brain, of a normal human brain, and here, you have a chimpanzee brain. The brains of mammals are really quite similar. They vary in size, but they share a common structure. But there are differences. Some of the more interesting differences are on the left side of the brain and have to do with language capabilities. 